Lord is good, really. The, the things he's doing, you know. Within the congregation, young uh, married couples. Amen. What he's doing in the, my private life, my family. The things that I would have never dreamt of, you know. I just have to thank God, really. Thank God. Amen. Amen. The, truly, the Lord is good. Um, wow. Okay, brethren, yeah, what, what, a, what a privilege it is to be standing before God's people. Really, I mean, it's a humbling, it's an exciting thing, and it's not a light thing. Praise God. Now, today I want to speak of a, on a, you know, a certain scripture that for me lays out the foundations of why we do what we do, on uh, the practices we, we keep, and why we keep them. Because you see, brethren, it's good to know why you do what you do. So if anyone asks, you can clear cut, say, reference to scripture, this is why we do this, because of this. It's not really good when, you know, you know what you want to say, but you can't say it. I used to find myself in that type of situation quite often. I, I, knew, I, had, I knew what I wanted to say, but I couldn't go and reference to the scripture. It would sort of be like, oh, I just take my word for it, it's like this. But... We need to know why we do what we do. Amen. Praise God. So if we could go to um, 1 John 2 verse 3. Now brethren, today I was, I didn't, I didn't even really know I was going to be up here. I was looking for excuses to, to, to get out of doing it. But you know, you, you don't need to plan ahead all the time. But it's, as when the apostles were arrested, when it says... Do not plan what you will say, but the Spirit will give you the utterance Amen. that very hour. We, we shouldn't always look to plan so much when we're trying to give an item unto God. Amen. Okay. And uh, this, this scripture here, this, this powerful scripture, someone was to read it and take it for what it says and not lean on their own understanding or the understanding of what the majority are doing. Okay. And it says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Amen. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Amen. Hereby know that we are in him. To be in him, we have to keep his commandments. And it's black and white as it says here. Okay. And he that singeth, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. So anyone that believes, you know, that the, the Ten Commandments are unrelevant, they're not relevant. This scripture should be talking to that person and letting them see that that theory can't be, can't be um, heeded. It can't be practiced. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. The commandments given unto Moses and what have you, they're still very relevant as it says here. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. And the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. So brethren, we have to, lo we have to love each person. Not only brother people in here, but we have to love those that hate us as well. Which we really need to be putting into practice. We can't be coming here week after week saying these things. But then you forget by Tuesdays, you know. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he go, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. So brethren, we really, we need to really read these scriptures. And obviously, it's not going to happen overnight. You need to be praying to God, seeking, trying to work on your weaknesses, well, you know, sin, really, I mean, you can't fight that with your own power, your own strength. You have to put it to the Lord. And as the song we were singing, 
What was the word? Uh, he will guide you. Uh, sorry? Yeah, Jesus will guide you. Uh, your troubles. Uh, yeah, he'll guide your troubles. So put forth your troubles unto the Lord and he will break these barriers. As long as we continue seeking his face, continue praying, and continue fasting, and giving the praise unto the Lord that is which is due. Thank you, Lord God. We praise your mighty name, Father, and we pray that we, brethren, we could really live what we read, what we study, what we come here week in, week out for, Lord God, for there's no use just reading and, and reading. Praise God. And that's my few words in Jesus' mighty name, brethren. Amen. Let's praise the Lord from the bar. Let's praise the Lord for him one more time. Didn't he really, didn't he really expand the word? Many, many people, brethren, are saying that the commandments was given at Sinai, but the commandments was from the beginning. The word of God says so. Many people are saying the commandments was only given by, to Moses at Sinai, but here the scripture is telling us these were from the beginning. the beginning. Amen. You see, we've got to understand when Cain slew his brother Abel, why was God against him? Because the commandments was there. Thou shalt not kill. Why was Joseph saying, I cannot do this great sin and sin against my Lord? Joseph was there with Potiphar's wife. And there you have it. You understand? And in Exodus 19, those who went out to gather sticks on the Sabbath day were stoned. Because the commandments was already there. And in Exodus 20, the Lord gave them the commandments written on stone. And there you have it. You see so much prosperity preaching on TV trying to tell us that we're not on the law but on the grace. I agree. I agree. We don't sacrifice no more. We're not under that law. We don't sacrifice turtle doves and pigeons. No, we're not under that law. We do not have to go up and dress in silk and robe and all those things that the ceremonies used to do. Because that law is done away with. Truly we're not under law. But you dare to one of them leave their door open and I go and steal all their stuff. They will call the police and tell me, he stole. And I'll stand up and say, we're not under law, but under grace. <laughs> what are you calling the police for? I can steal. No, 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 you can't steal. Well, so we see these people. We give God thanks for Brother Byron today. We're not under law, indeed, but we're under grace. Praise the Lord.